43 plus, and what a man. We've enjoyed him. I've gotten old with him, so <laughs> I'm gonna miss him very much. What I remember most about Mark, of course, is his mustache. So congratulations on your retirement, and thanks for all the memories. Yeah, the mustache. Uh, Bay Area sports broadcasting icon is getting ready to sign off the air one last time. Our sports director, Mark Ibanez, is moving on after 43 years right here at KTVU. But before he does, I sat down with Mark for a candid conversation about what it's been like over the years to cover the greatest moments in Bay Area sports history and what inspired him to get into the business. My dad always told me, if you find a job that you love, that you don't dread going to every day, you'll never work a day in your life. A life captivated by sports, but it didn't start out that way. Mark says he didn't come from a sports-oriented family. In fact, he knew nothing about sports until the sixth grade, when he won free tickets through his paper route in San Rafael to a Giants game. I'll never forget the, the bright green grass, and they were playing the St. Louis Cardinals bright red uniforms, and just the smell of, at that time, cigars and stale beer and hot dogs. And it just, as a little sixth grader, it just captivated me. At that moment, Mark's world changed when one particular player caught his eye. He says he curiously nudged his buddy who came to the game with him to learn more. Who's that guy? He goes, that's Willie Mays, you idiot. You know, and, uh, and I'm like, oh, and I was, the way he moved, the way everything, like he was so obviously a star, and it just, like hit, getting hit with a thunderbolt. I just fell in love with baseball. I became that nerd kid with the transistor radio in my ear. And when that season ended, I'm like, wow, maybe, maybe football's this cool. Maybe basketball's this cool. And I became like a sports maniac, and my parents were like, hmm. What's going on here? What's up with him? Fast forward to the year 1979, when gas prices were 90 cents a gallon. Diane Feinstein was mayor of San Francisco. And Michael Jackson's hit song, Don't Stop Until You Get Enough, was at the top of the charts. A young Mark Ibanez also couldn't get enough, leaving behind a sports anchor gig in Sacramento for brighter lights back home in the Bay Area. When you first landed the job at KTVU, what was it like to walk through the doors and say, I'm gonna be working here at Channel 2? Full on intimidating. I mean, you walk in the door and at that time, those were like the real golden years of Channel 2. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't start with Dennis Richmond, you know, and uh, such an intimidating figure at that time, you know, and, and he was the anchor, right? And uh, I kept thinking, you know, I'd be over at my little sports desk and I hadn't talked to him yet. And I'm trying to think of ideas like, how can I break the ice and talk to Dennis Richmond, you know? KTVU hired Mark as the weekend sports anchor. He says it was his dream job to be here. Mark told himself, just lay low and let your work speak for itself. It wasn't long after that, he got tapped to sit alongside Dennis Richmond, Barbara Simpson, and Pat McCormick for the weeknight 10 o'clock news, and the rest is history. But Mark says that first night out on the set was like a surreal out-of-body experience, a moment he says he'll never forget. It was, there's nervous, and then there's like something beyond that. Like I was <laughs> way too nervous like to be able to speak. Well, something obviously worked out pretty darn well. <laughs> You've endured. It's rare to be in one town, one station for so many years. You've done it for 43 years. When you look back over all that time and think back, you've covered some of the most amazing moments in sports. And the Bay Area is a rich sports town. Right. So much Underrated history. sports town. So really much big. history here. Does anything rise to the top as one of the greatest moments in your career of covering sports here in the Bay Area? Well, you hit it on it, Julie. First of all, I lucked out so bad to be in the golden era of sports. I started here in 79, and the 49ers were ready to embark on their dynasty. And then five Super Bowls. The Raiders won a Super Bowl, I believe, in 1980. The Warriors won three championships. The, the Giants won three World Series in five years. The A's won a World Series. We had the earthquake right in the middle of one World Series in 89. So many iconic moments. 
And when I think about, you know, prior to 9-11, they used to let us on the field. I mean, and watch the games from that perspective. I was literally 20 yards away from Dwight Clark when he made the catch, you know? And uh, all those kind of things resonate. I was at the Cal Stanford big game when uh, they ran through the band and the unbelievable finish. All the band is out on the field! You couldn't ask for a better time period to be a sports guy, just truly the golden era in the Bay Area, truly fortunate. Uh, just that old footage, looking <laughs> I back, know. I mean, so many yeah. years, I'm you're a like a treasure chest of <laughs> stories, he really is, he always has so many stories. Is it <clears throat> hitting you yet? Uh, not quite yet, maybe a little bit on the drive home last night, I was thinking, you know, two more nights coming home, but I got to thank you for wow. digging all that up and uh, wow, <laughs> I, I was just kind of um, stunned to see all that stuff because it comes tumbling in a, in a wave of memories and uh, for me, it is all about the people you encounter. I mean, our viewers have been... Uh, Unbelievable to me because I was seeing you on the phone a lot lately. <laughs> I know in the sports uh, office, the phone's been answering you know, answering emails. But but that's the thing that makes it worth it is the people that you you bump into and they they know that you are passionate about it as are they and that's been the highlight for me. Just our our viewers putting up with me in the early days where I was kind of what do they say fake it till you make it. <laughs> and, you did well. And uh, and then and then now it's just it's. Just just uh, it hasn't totally set in. I got to tell you, as, as a kid at Cal, I was at that game. That was my senior year when the band. You had to say the field. kid. Did I, you? <laughs> I used to watch you and said, "I want to do what Mark's doing." Now, I grew up in Arinda, and then we met at Fenway Park in the late right. '80s. I went right up to Mark and said, "Hi, I'm Frank Melicote. I want to come back to the Bay Area." And uh, it's really a thrill to to be here, you know, yeah. and uh, it, working with you. And now have I a think, in, to say goodbye. you know, summation, you know, you dream of of doing something since you were a little kid and then sometimes when you you get fortunate enough to get to where you dreamed of sometimes maybe it's a disappointment this has been way way beyond a dream for me well, i mean it's so much more than i even it would dare to have dreamed. And you're so good at what you do. There's been right. so many amazing moments. Like you said, truly a golden era in Bay Area sports, and we have such a great sports region here. But what's it going to be like, like going to a sporting event? Because <laughs> you go all the time, and you're working, to, you know, brush against deadlines and all that. But to actually sit back and enjoy, how is that going to feel? I can't wait till uh, Giants opening night, uh, opening day, a week from Friday. My oldest son, Coy, is going to take me to the game, and I'm not going to take a note. I'm not going to – I might not – not even know the score. I'm just going to take it easy and, and enjoy a baseball game with uh, which was the sport that got me involved that in it. That story about Willie Mays. Yeah. My, my first really. love and, and he was my true hero and inspiration to me and uh, to be able to watch the Giants and, and not have to it worry about note. doing yeah. it at 10 o'clock. <laughs> well it's so funny if you don't know Mark well like we do he never has a script like he oh. always has like just a little scratch pad of like, <laughs> he had like how everything. he does it but he never he's like flawless and just has no script, just notes, little like. I wouldn't say flawless, but. <laughs> <laughs> no. What about at night? I mean, you've worked nights your entire yeah. life, and now all of a sudden you're going to be hanging around your wife and your son. And yeah. What's uh, that going to be? A lot of people feel sorry for my wife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've got uh, two grandkids and another one on the way, and yeah. I plan on spending a lot of time and actually having dinner at a normal time wow. in the evening, yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, and then, uh, and then I'll be just watching the 10 o'clock news. All right, well, we are not <laughs> done with you yet. Oh, you wow. still have Keep another day good. to go, so yeah. we're not finished. There's a lot more Mark coming up. So uh, you, you hang Julie. tight. Yeah, you're so Thank welcome. You. It's Thank just you. been an honor and so much fun to work Is with the you. Viewers. Viewers. The mustache, uh, I, I tried to grow a little uh, growth, but uh, <laughs> right. that's what time, people remember me for. All right. Well, <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> you will be here tomorrow and later on tonight for sports. Yeah. Mark's final sign-off <laughs> is tomorrow night at 11. But we, again, as we said, we're going to have much more of his incredible career all day tomorrow starting on the 4. Tissues are right over there. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff.